Hello and welcome to the next episode of the ABC Music Talk podcast. In this episode, I'll be trying to answer the question, do I need to know a lot about music? Um, this perhaps seems like a fairly simple question, um, but I believe that it has many layers to it. So this episode forms part of the basics category within this podcast series. And I will be trying out some new recording practices, which hopefully will improve the, the sound quality. Uh, so apologies and bear with me while I try and perfect my podcasting skills. It's all part of the learning process. So what do I mean by this question? Do I mean how music is composed? Is this a question about needing to understand the difference and, and the sort of complexities around scales and key signatures? Or is it around music production and the recording process? Do I need to know the difference between a sequencer and a sampler and indeed how to use them? Or is this more of a question about having listened to certain albums that are considered seminal that define certain genres or at least were at the beginning and, and, and set the tone for, for, for genres that are now you know, defining uh, moments in, in music's history? Do I need to understand which artists and be able to recite which bass players and composers worked on this, that and the other album? How important is any of this stuff? Um, certainly I've found that I have a lot of friends that are in my immediate uh, group, peer group, friendship group, that seem to display and, and have possess a, a very encyclopedic knowledge of, of music. Um, I've always found that incredibly impressive. I struggle to re retain that type of level of what I consider trivia in my head, but I guess for some people that um, that forms part of who they are. And uh, and, and again, it it's often can lead to a sort of a situation, especially in say like a, you know, a pub quiz that's focused on music, that's a fairly intimidating situation. Um, other examples could be, and I think the film High Fidelity with John Cusack and Jack Black is quite a, uh, quite a good way of explaining what I mean by that sort of intimidating process. Uh, for me, that that, that film spoke uh, volumes about the early experiences that I had as a music fan and buying uh, records, of course, physical records. And, you know, a, a large part of my music discovery was going into the local independent record shop and flicking through the uh, various racks, looking at the different chart walls, perhaps even speaking to the staff that worked there and trying to understand, OK, if I like this, maybe I like that. Um, this really got heightened when I started to buy dance vinyl uh, i never had any aspirations of being a, a dj at a, at a club particularly but i always enjoyed the music and liked the the, the art form of, of mixing records together and so going into some of the west end dance shops like plastic fantastic um, i got later got to know the owner of that quite well in my career but, but certainly at the, the early days of being a teenager and going up with my hard-earned cash to go and spend it all on records uh, walking, walking into those shops for the first time was a you know real eye opener. You know they didn't have the racks, they didn't have the uh, chance to walk in as a casual uh, you know observer off the street and really get get to know uh, you know what what was the latest record out there. You had to kind of walk in knowing exactly what it was that you wanted already and and just go and ask for it. And then you'd get given the record and then you'd go and have a little listen on on one of the decks in in the shop. It was a very very different experience. And so the reason why I wanted to do this episode was because I wonder whether, uh, and certainly I've, for me at least, I, I've experienced this, you know, having dealt doubts around, you know, your particular career choice, you know, affecting your own confidence and sometimes just frustrating you and when you feel like you don't know as much as everybody else does. And this idea of knowing what is good, like what is good music seems to crop up a lot. You know, you often hear people saying, oh, that's no good or that's good. That's good music. You know, what does that mean? Uh, is it just somebody's opinion or is it because it's following a particular trend that is, forms part of the zeitgeist at the time? Or is it perhaps just more about understanding the culture and the community that some of these genres, you know, uh, sort of you know, form and, and, and represent? Certainly when I'm in various uh, uh, meetings uh, in some of the, with some of the clients that I have at my company, and you meet the, these folks, and, and to me this is virtual witchcraft, where they can listen to a, a record from a completely unknown artist and they have this ability to break down the track and explain very clearly and articulately why a record isn't any good or it is good and that they're, they're they're picking out the lyrics or they're looking at the uh the the, the form of the of the record verse and chorus order or whether there's a midsection in there that shouldn't be in there the instrumentation that's used i mean the whole sort of endless list of things that they're able to kind of analyze with with this music and uh and and that is you know this kind of skill set of being able to 
uh, know what is what is good. To me, this perhaps speaks to, um, and I, I've mentioned it before in, in a previous episode, that there's this kind of scale where you've got the artist on one side and, and the audience on the other. And, and they're the only two elements that, that really matter in the music industry because everything else is either enhancing that or getting in the way. And these individuals, I would say, lean far more closer to the uh, the audience side and they actually are the audience they're in the, the the intended audience it just so happens that this is also their professional career so it's kind of their their whole world just being uh, you know inserted into that middle section to try and determine what is good and what isn't good um but and they can only really do that because they're actually consuming in the same way that the intended audience is i.e a lot hanging out in those spots whether that's these days online or physically in the clubs uh, or just out in the in the shops or on the streets um so you know, I think that ability to know what is good can—it's it, a—it's a certain mindset, it's a certain skill set, it's a, a a real lifestyle choice. So perhaps for others where they're not either able to do that or don't really have the same level of interest or access, uh, yeah, perhaps as a geography thing, uh, perhaps this, this is then a, a question about you know a, the type of job or career that you have. You know, how much do you need to know about music? Let's face it, to be a, a lawyer or a, somebody in a finance team. You know, both of those particular roles are, you know, fairly transferable into into other industries. You know, the the, the mechanics of them are something similar. Or right? law is fairly specialised around copyright acts and all the rest of it. But um, and of course finance, you know, understanding some of the jargon around royalties and, and that type of thing. Um, but again, neither neither of those aspects require you need to know a lot about music. You know, ultimately, lawyers and accountants aren't the ones making decisions around what music to to bring in and sign to a say a record label or to a publisher. Uh, or indeed they're not making a, any sort of uh, impactful decisions around how those records are then marketed to, you know, to, to make revenue for, for the artists and to the, the companies involved. So that I think is a, an important part. I think actually business people, and I put, probably put myself more in this class than anything else, despite the fact that I was a musician and uh, and have had you know those kind of A&R type of roles in, in my career, I'm, I'm definitely more on the business side. I think these days... Um, more by accident than anything else but you know i don't feel like i necessarily really need to know an awful lot about music uh to to be able to talk you know in that sort of encyclopedic way that i mentioned earlier um technology of course is an in, is another thing that's really impacting um the types of people that work within the music industry much more so than it ever used to and that's not to say that you know technology wasn't in it before we had the internet i mean the evolution was something along the lines of you know uh you know, sort of live performances, con you know, concerts or busking folk music, uh, and really the innovation in technology there was the the, the instruments that were being used and, and created. Uh, but of course, we then moved on to re recorded music, which then went into radio, TV, and of course now, as I, as I mentioned, the internet is a sort of a catch-all for what I think most what most people think of as as technology these days within music. It's normally got an internet or a connected device aspect to it. But, you know, a magazine publisher, you know, did, did they need to know a lot about music in order to be in the music industry and be a publisher of a magazine? As long as they've got journalists and, and, and writers that are able to produce the content for them to then go on and publish, really, that's the thing that's important. So, yeah, a journalist would have to know. Uh, they'd have to know an awful lot about music. They'd want to be able to reference that in their writing. But for the publisher, again, you, would you need to know? Not really. Your, your job is to be a magazine publisher. And again, transferable across lots of different industries. I think also what's important here is, again, going back to technology, the uh, the idea that what we're seeing now is uh, um, due to the way that people are connected um, across the world, thanks largely to streaming and, of course, the Internet um, is, is the big, big aspect of this. Um, people coming in from, from other backgrounds. So I have a friend who has created a music video creation tool and his background is not the music industry. He comes from a design and a technology background. And I think that without people like that coming in with a very sort of fresh and unbiased and kind of, uh, you know, uh, unaffected uh, look uh, uh, at the industry because they haven't worked from within it, a lot of that innovation is going to come from people like that. Uh, you know, and I think if I was to ask uh, my friend who owns this company, you know, do you know a lot about music? I think he'd probably just answer with, well, you know, I know enough, but... No, I don't, you know, he wouldn't sort of be able to say, yeah, no, actually, you know, I, I consider myself uh, an expert in any particular genre or, or you know, uh, music form that that is required as part of his world. Um, he might tell me that he's passionate about particular artists or, or scenes. That's cool, but he ultimately doesn't really need to know that. That's not what he's doing. So I think in conclusion to all of this, 
uh, as long as you've got an interest and a passion in what you're doing and you can and remember you can only know what you know and if you're ever feeling like you don't know enough then you can always go away and, and do some more research and, and learn more so I think anyone who's having any doubts around their career choice that's perhaps affecting their, their confidence or you know they're feeling frustrated day to day that they just they don't seem to know as much as anyone else think about what it is that you're actually doing perhaps actually you do need to make a change you know maybe that's something that you need to kind of realize in your in yourself um but uh, ultimately as long as that interest and passion's there as long as you're able to do your job and you you're surrounded by people that understand it well enough so that you know you, you're not kind of in this situation where um you're you know you're uh you know kind of making mistakes on on the you know for the artists which are again as i mentioned before one side of the the you know the coin that's important you know, audience and an artist uh then really you know do you need to know a lot about music well probably not so that that was kind of where i wanted to get to with this i think that um uh if it, I wonder if actually other people listening to this might want to discuss this further. Perhaps I can do a, a follow up uh, episode on this. So if you do have questions, then please do uh, you know uh, contact me via Twitter or on email. Uh, remember, if you put podcast and DM on on Twitter, I will follow you back. Or alternatively, uh, go back uh, to my website at www.abcmusic.co and you'll find on the contacts page an email address with which to uh, to send me a note and we can uh, we can discuss it further. Yeah, I'd be very keen to hear people's thoughts about whether this is a question that they've come to before uh, or whether it's uh, uh, you know something that, that kind of you know sits with them every day as they go into work and thinking you know i don't know enough to be doing what i'm doing um I'm, I'm very very curious about about people's feedback so do so do contact me thank you very much for listening